Ben, did race control make the right call or did they set a bad precedent for the future? No and yes. And I'm going to try to remain as calm as I possibly can here. I've kind of lost my voice with how much I've been uh, going off here over the last couple of hours just to people that I was watching the race with. I did a short little IG Live segment. Joe, I know you popped in there as well. Um, but no, this I, I don't think this was the right call. And again, that's not a knock on Joseph Newgarden. He did everything he needed to do. Um, but everybody's talking about how oh, we, we got the finish we deserved. Um, I, the question I would ask is, was, was the finish really that great? I mean, you said it, Joe. The leader is disadvantaged on the restart. You only had one lap to try to settle this. Marcus Erickson was kind of a sitting duck there. Joseph Newgarden did what he was expected to do, passed him on the final lap. Erickson did everything he could to try to get him back. Newgarden zigzagged down the front straightaway to break the draft. He brought it home, and that was the race. It was a pretty predictable ending, I think. So I don't even know. I mean, I guess the, the whole argument is that it's, it's more exciting, more entertaining than just ending the race under caution. Um, Ten years ago, there was a very popular guy by the name of Tony Kanad who ran what – it sounds like is almost certainly going to be his last Indianapolis 500. We never know with TK, but he sounds pretty certain this time. He finally got his Indy 500 win. Not much unlike the feeling that we have for Joseph Newgarden today. One of the most popular drivers in the sport finally wins this race. It ended under caution. I don't recall very many people, maybe Carlos Munoz fans, because Munoz didn't get a shot to get TK back, but I don't recall very many people saying, man, you know, it's great for TK, but this win's illegitimate because it ended under caution. I don't recall very many people in 1998 saying, well, you know, it's great. Dale Earnhardt finally got it done after 20 years of trying, 20 years of frustration, but we got to put the asterisk next to it, man, because it ended under caution. I don't think he really earned this one. Was anybody arguing that before NASCAR decided to implement green-white checkers and overtimes and revamp the system that they have for that? And at least they have a system. I know we'll get into that here for IndyCar in just a moment, but Joe, you bring up Abu Dhabi 2021. This is exactly that scenario here. This I, I don't see a precedent for this. And as a matter of fact, I guess I'll, I'll go ahead and bring it up now. I wanted to show this tweet uh, during the next segment. But uh, Aaron Bearden brought out this tweet yeah. from uh, 2020 when the race ended under caution for Spencer Pickett's accident. And he said, it's, it's weird how quickly a precedent can change. He cited this Indy Star article from a statement from the series themselves saying, IndyCar makes every effort to end races under green. But in this case, following the assessment of the incident, there were too few laps remaining to gather the field behind the pace car, issue a red flag, and then restart. And isn't it funny how quickly the precedent seems to have changed completely unannounced? We didn't know if they were going to red flag the race or not. The booth didn't know if they were going to red flag the race or not. And yet here we are. Nobody knows what's going to happen. Nobody knows what the rule is, what the precedent is going forward. I think it absolutely sets a dangerous precedent because... These are not stock cars. These are very de- We saw it with Kyle Kirkwood, and that red flag was justifiable. That red flag was absolutely justifiable because that was a safety concern. If you're going to throw the red flag, I know Josh has made this argument on the Encore show as well. As well. Um, the red flag has to be reserved for safety only when the track is unsuitable to drive on even at caution pace. And in the case of the last two incidents here, I think if those accidents happen at any other point in the race— we're just going to caution. We're not going to a red flag. We're just going to a yellow flag. They red flagged the race because there weren't enough laps left and the race was going to end under caution. They did it to get a green flag finish. And I'm sorry, that is by definition a gimmick. That's the kind of gimmick that we see in NASCAR. It's the kind of gimmick that I think has frustrated a lot of NASCAR fans over the last several years. Now it seems to have been infiltrating open wheel racing. And in my opinion, it, it sets a very dangerous precedent going forward that I think a lot of fans aren't going to be a fan of. Yeah, Ben, and you you nail it right on the head there. It's it's something that's going to be troubling to see go in the future if it stays on this present course because the the red flag lets you know that something really is messed up. Something really happened out there, and the the incident that uh, was between the six and the twenty seven in turn two that definitely was caused for a red flag. That's a no brainer. You throw it out, um, but then you look at the incident. Uh, with, with a 560, and I'm looking at timing and scoring as we speak. The, so caution number four from lap 193 to 195 was contact with cars 5, 60, and 78 in turn three causes or another red flag. And then 196 to 198 laps, cars 33 and 55 on the front straight, um, both sides of the of the front stretch there next to the bricks, they have to pass through the middle. 
um, easily. And, and if you look back at 2020, like uh, Aaron Bearden is pointing out for us, that probably would have been the end of it um, at that, that caution flag there. And I've been on shows with people in the past that strongly disagree about they, they're all for the green flag uh, finish at all costs uh, philosophy. And Ben, you and I have been very vocal on Grid Live Encore uh, that if a race is going to be 500 miles, then by gone it, it's, it needs to be 500 miles. You know, you're not going to be 501, 502. And so this this uh, use of this improper use of the red flag does concern me, and I try to keep all my biases out of the way. And uh, looking at it from that lens, it really shows that th this is not good. And it's, it seems like this has been something that's obviously been picked up from the stock car, stock car world and needs to be uh, solved really quickly and, and, and not done like that. And let me be clear because I was going back and forth with somebody on Twitter about this as well, who said, I don't think you understand what overtime is. When I say NASCAR overtime has infiltrated open wheel racing, I don't mean that in the literal sense that IndyCar extended the race to get yeah. a green flag finish here. What I mean by that is it's the principle of the philosophy of trying to get a green flag finish at all costs. NASCAR has taken the route where they literally extend the race and run extra laps to try to manufacture and guarantee a green flag finish, which, by the way, half the time they don't even get because they wreck on a white flag lap anyway. But that's NASCAR's route to try to get their green flag finish. They add laps onto the race. In open wheel racing, I will give them minimal credit because at the bare minimum, the Indianapolis 500 still ended after 500 miles today. We can be thankful for that. But it's the same philosophy here. You change your race procedure to guarantee a green flag finish. You, I'm sorry. That, that is by definition, if, if you're going to call green-white checkers a gimmick, this is a gimmick here, what we saw today too. The question I would ask is, everybody said, oh, we had 300,000 people show up today. And that's great, by the way. It's, it's great that that many people bought a ticket to come to watch the greatest spectacle on racing. If we're making the decisions for how we run our series based on the number of people in the seats, if that's the top thing that guides our decision-making, then our priorities are all out of whack. I, I don't even know what to say to that. You're going to argue that the fans that paid a ticket deserve a green flag finish, and look how many there are. Therefore, we're going to abandon all precedents and run the race to guarantee that happening. I, I mean, don't buy that, that for a moment. That's asinine to me. Yeah, I had having a whole month to interact with Indy, Indianapolis fans, I think they're going to be fine with a yellow finish because they're, I mean, they're most of them are seem to be racing purists and just the, the happy go lucky folks that are there, they're, they're going to be fine either way. Like you're, oh. you're setting something up. I don't think they're really looking to get, but the more you do it, the more it swings in that direction. Because to, to Joe's point now, if that happens next weekend in Detroit, like let's say a new IndyCar fan, turn this race on today. This was the first race they watched. They don't know a different world now. So when we get a, if, if, and when we get a crash with three to go in Detroit, you know, what are they going to expect to happen? And, and the more fans that get conditioned to enjoy this, they're going to go, well, why is it not here? There you yeah. go. That's yeah. exactly it.